today I'm gonna to be smoking some chuck roasts out on the Weber kettle. And one of those I'm gonna be turning into sliced beef for some barbecue beef sandwiches. Now I'm gonna be doing two chuck roasts today and each one is gonna have a different rub. I wanna get that first rub put together. We're gonna to start with a tablespoon of ground black pepper, a tablespoon of granulated garlic, a teaspoon of salt, and about a tablespoon of ground up South African smoked seasoning from Trader Joe's. You could substitute paprika or something like that if you can't get that, but this is a great seasoning. I'm just gonna mix this together. Just like that. The other rub that's gonna be on the other chuck roast is a pre-made rub and I'll show you that in a minute, but let's get the chuck roasts out here. So here I've got my two chuck roasts. Each one is about three pounds. This one over here, he decided to separate himself, so we'll just shove him back together as we cook him. This one right here is the one I'm gonna be using for sliced beef sandwiches. This is gonna be for something else in another video that's coming up. I wanna get the pre-made rub on this one and what I'm gonna be using is a Flaps 20 Thriller rub, if you can see that. I really like this rub. And get a good coating all over this. Get the edges, right over this side. All right, I'm happy with that one. I'm gonna move on to the second one. I'm gonna put my rub right here and start coating this. And since we got two pieces here, we'll just break them apart as we rub them. Sure everybody gets covered here. Any idea what I'm gonna use this second one for? I'll bet you can't guess. No, really, I'll bet you can't guess. All right, I'm happy with these chuck roasts now. They're gonna go in the refrigerator overnight, and tomorrow morning when I bring you back, we're gonna smoke them out on the Weber kettle. All right, it's about 8.30 in the morning. I've got the kettle going. Temperature is about 230-ish degrees. I'm gonna be shooting for somewhere between 225 and 250 today. Let's take a look at the setup I'm running today. All right, so I have the Weber kettle set up with the slow and sear. I've got some foil on one side to catch drips. We have our ambient temperature probe in there hooked up to the Thermapro. I'll also be running a temperature probe for the meat. So let's go ahead and get these chuck roasts on. put our bigger one over on this side. This is the one that didn't fall apart into two pieces. We're gonna put our two-piece roast over here. And I don't care if these two touch because they were one roast. Yeah, I'm gonna get my temperature probe in here. All right, our temperature probe in the meat is showing 37 degrees. These came straight out of the refrigerator, so that's perfect. All right, let's add some wood to make some smoke. All right, here goes some post oak. I was considering using cherry, but I decided to use some post oak today because I really like this wood. It's gonna wait for our post oak to catch. There it goes. Let's get our lid on. So I'm gonna dial in these vents to maintain that 225 to 250. It's probably gonna stay closer to 250 during most of the day. So I'm gonna set the bottom vents at two thirds and the top vent at about a half and I'll work from there. Bring you back in about an hour or so when we check these and maybe spritz them. All right, we're a little over an hour into this cook. We've got an internal meat temp of 131. This is typical with chuck roast and things like that. It moves really fast right away. <laughs> and then it'll start to slow down and hit that stall. And I will likely be wrapping this when it gets in the 150 to 160 range when it sort of stalls out. Kettle temp's at 260, a little high. That's okay, we're gonna open it up right now and we're gonna add another piece of wood. Just take a look at these chucks. As you can probably see, there's a ton of moisture on this. We have moisture in there with the slow and water reservoir. It's also very moist out here today. We just had over an inch and a half of rain yesterday. A little bit of rain last night, so the air is very moist. These chucks are looking good. We don't need to spritz these right now, but I do need to add some more wood. Gonna let our piece of post oak catch and we'll get the lid back on. All right, that's looking good. Let's get our lid back on. The final internal temp that I'm shooting for today is 190. That's when I'm gonna be pulling these completely 
and one is going to be sliced, the other is going to be used for something else. But as I mentioned, somewhere in the 150 to 160 range, I will be wrapping these and adding a little bit of moisture. So I'll bring you back when it's time to wrap these. All right, we are just over two hours into this cook. The meat temp is at 155, and it's been at 155 for about 15 minutes, so we're kind of stalling out here. Kettle temp's 249, perfect. So I'm gonna go ahead and wrap these, and with the one that I'm gonna be using for the sliced beef, I'm gonna be doing a late injection on this. I'll show you that. Oh, those chucks are looking good. You can see all the moisture there. A lot of moisture in these and in the chamber. I could let these go naked the entire time, but I want to wrap these. I'm going to get our temperature probe out. Try and remember where it goes in this one. So my injection for this is two tablespoons of butter with about a cup and a half of an Eastern North Carolina barbecue sauce from my friend Scott over at The Real Show Barbecue. And I've heated this up so it's the same temperature as the chuck roast, right in the 150s. So we're not injecting cold fluid inside a warm piece of meat. All right, I'm happy with that. Let's get this wrapped up and back on. I want to try and remember my temperature probe was right here. Let's see if we can get our probe in close to the same position. Temperature's looking good, 149, so got pretty close. And with some of that injection there, that would cool it off a little bit, even if it was close to temp. All right, so let's get our lid back on, keep smoking. All right, we just blew a little past 190, but that's all right. Kettle temp 259. I'm gonna get these chuck roasts off. These are both gonna go in a foil pan, just staying covered for at least an hour. All right, here is our smoked chuck roast. The second one I've already put aside, it's in the refrigerator because that's gonna be for another video. This one we're gonna be turning into sliced beef for some barbecue beef sandwiches. So let's cut into this. I'm just gonna go straight across the middle here. Oh, looks good. Nice and juicy there. Got a good little smoke ring. So what I'm gonna do now is start slicing this and I'm gonna try and get slices that are as thin as possible. Not bad. Oh, this little piece fell off. That means I have to have Ooh, oh, well, that's good. I can really taste that Eastern North Carolina barbecue sauce that I injected into it. Now, if I had taken this about 15 degrees more, this would be sort of the pull apart beef, uh, shredded beef. But by taking it just to the 190, actually, what was it, 194 when I ended up pulling it, it kind of spiked past me. This is what you're gonna get. You're gonna get something that's a little more sliceable at times. It's not gonna fall apart quite as easily. But the key to making it not tough is giving it that time after you pull it off to just rest. And this rested for actually about an hour and 15 minutes wrapped in foil. So I'm happy with this right now and I'm gonna start building a sandwich. All right, here we go. I have just a standard hamburger bun. I haven't done anything special to this. This is just a simple, basic barbecue beef sandwich made from smoked chuck roast. But let me tell you, it's gonna be good. We're just gonna pile this beef on and I'm gonna sauce it. If anyone out there doesn't like sauce, avert your eyes. The sauce I'm gonna put on here is a Trader Joe's Sriracha Garlic Barbecue Sauce. And I'm also gonna put a few pepperoncinis on top here. All right. Here is my smoked chuck roast barbecue beef sandwich with sauce, pepperoncinis. I'm gonna top it and it's time to taste. Here we go. I'm not even gonna cut it in half. I'm just gonna dive into it whole. All right, here we go. Mmm, let me tell you, 
that Eastern North Carolina barbecue sauce injection I did really worked at that late stage. I've never done a late injection before. I just decided to try it after seeing what some other people had done. And honestly, I think it really helped in giving it that flavor and moisture at the end of the cook. Mmm, mmm, good. Now what some people do with chuck roasts like this is they will actually take them past like a 190 to get to that 205 or so and really just shred that beef, pour barbecue sauce in there and take that meat and pile that on a bun. And you can definitely do that too. But for sliced sandwiches, that 190 to 195, I've found to be a better temperature range. The total cook time today was almost exactly six hours. So for a three pound chuck roast, that's about standard what I've found when you're doing that 250 range. It spiked around between 230 to 260 most of the day. So right really in that 250 meaty spot. You could do this hot and fast. You could take it up to 300 degrees or more and push it a little faster. At that time, you're really going to have to watch wrapping it and keeping moisture in there. But this time frame and the temperature that I ran the kettle at seemed to work perfectly. So if you want to try making barbecue beef sandwiches, especially sliced ones, don't ignore the chuck roast. Just give it that time to smoke and make sure at the end that you slice it as thin as possible and you've got a great sandwich. Mm.